Good evening, Facebook family and friends. I'm so excited to come back to you with another ministry moment here on Friday nights. I I want to start with something, and it's gonna be it's it's, it's gonna be a little different for you, but. Uh, I was remembering what I talked about the last time I did a ministry moment, and I talked about Ezekiel and the Valley of Dry Bones, and God was asking him in the vision that he had, first of all, the vision that he had, what did he see, and could those could those dry bones live? And he replied back to God, only you know. But God then began to give him instructions. You, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look back. It's, it's, a, it's some weeks ago now, but... Uh, the first thing that had to happen was that Ezekiel had to see what he was looking at. And I started thinking about how we can sometimes see things a different way. Do you remember back a few, uh, I think it might've been a few years ago now where uh, they had this image, an optical illusion where some people saw a blue dress and some people saw a gold dress or uh, some people saw when they had the little shoes, some people saw like uh, rose shoes and some people saw gray shoes and all these, because of the way that our minds are, are and how we're constructed, sometimes we see different things um, looking at the same images. And I started thinking about that. And, and, and it's, it's funny because, do you know, I hear Bishop Jake say this often, somebody could take the life that you have and win with it because of the way that they look at it, because of their perspective. And sometimes we have, we're sitting on a gold mine, our life, our ministry, our work, our, our families, and we don't appreciate it because we can't see it for what it is. And tonight, I really want to just take a little bit of time and tell you to look again. Whatever it is that you've been complaining about, whatever it is that you've been dealing with, I just want to encourage you to look again. And we're going to go into Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter one. It's the first time that uh, God gives a vision to this prophet. And it's a very familiar scripture. People use it all the time talking about uh, Jeremiah and, and how he formed us in the womb and he knew us before. And that scripture, you know, people use a lot, but I wonder if they really, really look at it. And I want us to look at it. And I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to give you an exercise. All right. Because I'm going to give I know sometimes people are logging on and you might be just now coming on. We're, we're going to be encouraging ourselves tonight to look again. And here it says the Lord gave me this message in chapter in chapter one, verse four. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. And then Jeremiah replies back to him, oh, sovereign Lord, I cannot speak for you, for I am too young. Scholars tell us that Jeremiah was about 17 years old when God first came to him and told him, you're a prophet. And he began to give all the reasons why he could not. He said, I cannot speak to you, for I am too young. And look at what God replied. Don't say I'm too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. So you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Now, there's a lot in there, but I don't even want to get you all into that scripture and into everything that we can look at there. I just want you to look at the part where he tells him, look, I know what you say about your life. I know what you say about who you are and what people think about you and what people are going to say about you. But what I want to tell you, Jeremiah, is I want you to look. I want you to look at what I'm doing through you. I want you to look at look at the words that I have put into your mouth. I don't want you to look at their faces. I don't want you to look at, look at what's going on around you. I don't want you to look at the storms. I want you to look at what I'm doing. And then further down, he tells them, he says, the Lord said to me, this is in verse 11, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? 
He says, what do you see, Jeremiah? I'm giving you a vision. Tell me what you see. And this is important because God's giving him this vision. Why? Because he's trying to train him into seeing what he's supposed to see. And again, I told you this is look again. So he says, Jeremiah gives his answer. And he says, I see a, I see a branch from an almond tree. And God tells him, he says, that's right. And what this means is I'm going, I'm watching and I'm going to carry out all of my plans. But then it's so funny. God says, now I want you to look again. Tell me what you see now. Tell me what you see now. Look at it again. You might have seen something in your life before that when you look back at it, it looks totally different. Have you ever just thought about your life? And especially I find this for myself as I look <laughs> as I look back over my life and I think all the things over. I can see a testimony where before I saw a test. Before it was a test. But it turned into a testimony because I looked again, because I went back and I examined it again. I went back and I looked and I saw how the enemy came in, but how the Lord lifted up a standard. Because I looked again, I want to show you something. There's a there's a picture and I'm going to I'm going to ask my husband to put it up. There's a picture that I want you to look at and I want you to tell me what you see. It's a it's an optical illusion. It's not blue or or or, or red or uh, gold or or gray. It's just a picture. I want you to look at it. Look at it. What do you see? What do you see there? I know some of you got to you got to take your glasses out, put them on. <laughs> that would be my mama. She got to pull her glasses out and look. Do you see a young woman? No. You see an old woman? Do you see both? Some people might see young. Some people might see old. Some can see both. I can look at it, and I see a young woman. And if I turn my head, I can see the old woman. Turn back, I can see the young. Turn again, I can see the old what is that telling me? That sometimes I have to change my perspective at what I'm looking at. Because what I'm looking at looks one way at night. <laughs> and it can look another way in the morning. What I'm looking at can look like a test. But when I look at it again in the morning, it can look like a testimony. He told Jeremiah, I want you to look again. Tell me what you see now. It even takes me back to, to, to the prophet. And he told his servant, he said, look out and tell me what you see. And he said, I don't see, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. And he said, look again. Go look again. And he says, he comes back and he says, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And he begins to run. In another instance, he tells him, he says, look and look again. And the prophet says, oh, do you see it? Do you see them that are with us? And he says, no, I don't see anything. And he says, and, and the prophet prays and says, God, open his eyes that he can see. That's what I'm praying for you tonight, that you can open your eyes, that you can see. That you can see that there's more for you than what's against you. You need to look again at your life. Look again at you as a person. What do you see when you look at you? What do you see when you look at you? I, I love this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit. You you might not know this. I, I've I've been watching. I actually just finished uh, the Genius um, documentary on Kanye West, and it was amazing to me. There's a lot that you can learn from it, but it was amazing to me his relationship with his mother, and how as long as he looked at himself through his mother's eyes, 
how he could, how he envisioned himself. And when he lost that link, it became difficult for him. Because she told him, there was a quote in there that's become kind of popular, that when a giant looks in the mirror, all he sees is himself. But everybody else sees a giant. It also works the other way. You might not see yourself as a giant. You might see yourself as a little boy carrying a lunch. You don't even know you're a giant killer. You don't even know that you are fully capable of doing all that God has called you to do because you're not looking at yourself correctly. You got to be able to look again. What do you see about your family? Do you see yourself in debt and in distress and struggling? Or do you see that there is hope for a new tomorrow? What do you see about your future? Do you just see the next day after the next after the next all continuing on the same way? Or do you see that there's more for you than against you? What do you see about your health? What do you see about your finances? What do you see? You know, there's a thing, there's a statement that I heard a long time ago, and sometimes I do this. I just sit back and I look at my life and I just stare at it. And I think about what it could be. What am I not seeing? Because if you stare at it long enough, you'll see the young woman. You'll see the old woman. You'll see both. If you stare at it long enough and you turn and you move, you'll see something you didn't see before. You got to be able to look again. You have to look again. Some of you need to look at your ministry again. You've thought ministry is only for people who are on the pulpit or that ministry is only for people who, who have it all together. But God's got a work for you to do. But you got to look again. You have to see that there's more in you than you thought. You got to look again. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you because you have fully equipped us to be able to do what you've called us to do. Just like you told Jeremiah, you called him because you knew he was capable, even when he didn't feel capable, just like us. There are times that we don't feel equipped to do what you've called us to do, but you have fully equipped us before you ever called us, before we were ever thought of. You knew that there was an assignment on this earth for us to walk out. I pray that you will help us to open up our eyes, that we can see how you are moving in our lives, that we can see how you are directing our path, that we can see that there is enough light for us to move forward. Help us to look again for that person right now that is saying there's nothing special about me. There isn't anything else for me to look at. I pray that you show them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that as you have called us, you have qualified those that you've called. And that even if we don't see it, you're putting your words in our mouth at this moment. And we don't need to look at the faces of anybody else. We don't need to hear the approval of anyone else. All we need to know is that you have approved us. Help us look again and see that there are more with us than with the enemy. I pray that you look again. God bless you.